And good morning, happy Sabbath. Welcome to MCRM, Missoula Community Regional Ministries, usually originating from Missoula, Montana. Today on the road from approximately six miles north of Hartford, uh, Connecticut. As you know, we are a multinational, multicultural Seventh-day Adventist group practicing diversity and inclusion. And as always, we are honored and blessed that you have joined with us this morning to worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, last week, Dr. Dexter Royce concluded his three-part series on the Advent season. The series included Family Tree, Promises, and last week he presented uh, Waiting. And today we have the privilege of receiving a message from Elder Gary Walton, uh, live there, six miles north of Hartford, Connecticut. Our call to worship this morning is Lamentations 3, verses 22 to 24. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. And our opening praise music this morning is brought to us by Jasmine Lebron and the Dynamic Praise Choir at Oakwood University. Uh, they will be singing Joy to the World. And this was from uh, last weekend's program at Oakwood University, uh, Oakwood University Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her keys Every preparing room The heaven, heaven, heaven and nature Heaven and nature Everybody say joy oh, Let earth receive Every heart Preparing room Heaven Go and tell us 
Amen, amen, and amen. Joy to the world. Indeed, we, our hearts are filled with joy. Welcome one and all again. We are just so grateful that you have chosen to be with us. As you know, each and every week, we recognize that you have choices and options and alternatives, but yet you have chosen to be here. And we are eternally grateful for your presence. Pastor Ross and I have been talking about the fact that so many people make commitments to be here with us that each of you are committed for your time, but yet you choose to show up here. And again, our hearts are absolutely grateful. Today, I just want to reflect very briefly on the fact that we have been on a journey throughout this year. 2023 is coming to an end and we would like to encourage each of you to go on a journey of reflection. Reflecting on your past year, reflecting on what and how God has led you, reflecting on the blessings that you have received. The process of reflecting and really slowing time down just a bit to sit with yourself, not to focus on missed opportunities or mistakes that you have made, but rather to stop and think about how God has been with you. To think about the patterns that you recognize in your life. What are patterns that you've noticed? And reflect and consider whether or not are there patterns I want to modify? Are there patterns I want to stop? Are there patterns I want to resume? And are there patterns I want to let go of? That's an important part of reflection. And another part of reflective practice is to just sit and to think about God and God's place in your life. To look at the degree to which you allow God to be the center of your life to the center of your decisions. And if you have been marginalizing God, if you have been keeping God on the periphery, reflect on what life would be like if you centered God, if you truly allow God to be the center of your life. When God is the center you can be sure that life will be better. It will be different. And so as you reflect, envision the life that you would want. I like to, I, I loved uh, saying, well, it's not a saying, it was the adventurer's pledge that the girls used to say. And it says, because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. And so that pledge begins by us recognizing the depth of Jesus's love for us. And when we reflect on how much Jesus loves us, then the outgrowth is us doing our best. And so I invite you in today, in the upcoming days, which will bring 2023 to an end and start 2024, I invite you to reflect, reflect, think about and acknowledge the way God has led you, but also reflect on the patterns of your life, which ones need to go into 24 and which ones need to be left behind. Thank you so very much. So as we... Uh come together in our collective prayer. I want us to think about what was just uh, said. Um, uh, we're going to have uh, Sister Tre El Roas singing Where Amazing Happens, after which I'm going to lead us out in our 
collective prayer. Standing on the edge of losing everything You're out of options, out of hope You've lost your way Your happy ever after Didn't turn out like you planned Searching for a solid place to stand Looking at the ashes of what could have been You can't help wondering if You finally reached the end Yet in this place of weakness Is when miracles begin Watch and see the dead can live again This is where a To the end of hope Nowhere left for you to go Welcome to the place of second chances This is where amazing happens This is where amazing happens <clears throat> And we thank you, Lord, for that reminder that coming together on our knees is where amazing happens. And so, Lord, as we reflect back over 2023, as we have traveled thus far, we just want to recognize that we have been blessed. the things that we may never know, the things that may have happened, the things that you have protected us from. But Lord, we do know that there is an evil one. And we do know that <clears throat> you have promised that you will protect us from the evil one. And so, Lord, we, we thank you and we praise you. But still, we look back and we recognize that in spite of the fact that we've made it thus far, that we could have made better choices. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, as we look ahead to the new year, Recognizing that tomorrow is not promised to us. Even now we want to uh, put our hands in yours. We want to resolve that uh, we want to grow closer to you in 2024. Yes. And so, Father, our resolution, even now, is to put you first. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we pray that you, your blessings may be upon our families. Your blessings may be on our community. Mm -hmm. Your blessings may be on our plans. Yes. Uh, bless us to this end, uh, Lord. Keep and guide us. And we thank you and we praise you for what you will do in our lives in 2024. Mm -hmm. Bless us to this end, we pray, Lord. And we pray that you will make amazing things happen. We will be careful, Lord, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for whatever happens in our lives. And we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. Our speaker is Elder Gary Walton. I will keep it short and say that um, Elder Gary Walton loves the Lord deeply and he shares a common favorite order like Pastor Lawrence. That would be <laughs> Ellen G. Lord. I will say that probably he loves her way more than Dexter. <laughs> uh, anytime Elder Gary Walton can find a book by Ellen G. White, a book, a pa pamphlet, any of her writings, he will grab it up in two seconds. Amen. So Amen. we are excited to welcome him back to MCRM. He has spoken here before. And so without further ado, I invite him to come and bring us a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning, MCRM, where you are this morning and where I am. It is in the afternoon, and we like it as such. I won't keep you long, but I'm a mailman, and I just have goods to deliver, so I'll make sure that I do it in a timely manner so that you can get your letters, your cards, your packages, whatever is in the mail. What I want us to do before we get any further is just to ask God's blessing on us as we get a chance to reflect on His Word. Eternal Father and our God, we are just so grateful for your watch here over us and for the opportunity to come at this time just to study your Word. And I ask, Lord, for your blessings upon us at this time in the precious name of jesus amen amen we have we can safely say that we have been woken up for 52 sabbaths in 2023 amen amen and by god's grace we only have one more wake up mm. to bring closure to 2023 and I just want to ask a question before we go in. If there were five challenging or disturbing news item of the year, what would come to your mind? What would? While you're contemplating, one that comes to my mind readily is Canada's approval of suicide for children. Disturbing. Another disturbing news item is that New York has approved or joined several other states of composing, composing human remains. So be careful when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot to buy soil. What you might be bringing home, it might be on Susie or just your neighbor <laughs> next door to put on your flowers or whatever. Find that disturbing. Mm, mm. Another disturbing mm. item I find is that I have to say this, and this may be political, but it's more prophetic, that under our current president, mm. we have two active warfare. Mm. The question is, when we see these things, what are we encouraged to do? We have been told to look up for your redemption, joy nine. Yeah. That's what Luke 21 and verse 28 tells us. Yeah. So today, I just want to talk briefly on a subject. And my wife will tell you that if I preach, 15 sermons in any year is going to be 10 of the 15 or maybe 13 will be on righteousness by faith or perfection of Christian character. So today we're going to talk about holiness. As you heard and um, about reflection, when we look at where we are today, Given what we were challenged by in 2023, 
How have we lived the Christian life? Could we say it was a life of holiness? I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 15 and 16. And it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Mm. Here is Peter challenging the brethren to be holy. Not just holy, holy in conversation. The word conversation means conduct. But that they are to be holy as their father is holy. And you're wondering, where did, where did Peter get this idea from? And we find that in Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44. We won't turn there in the interest of time. So you're asking the question, what is holiness? According to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, it defines holiness as a state of being holy. Purity or integrity of moral character. Freedom from sin. Sanctity. And when this is applied to the supreme being, it denotes perfect purity or integrity of moral character, one of his essential attributes. God is holy. Now, and Ellen White mm -hmm. defines holiness as not a rapture. It is an entire surrender of the will to God. It is living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting God in trial, in darkness, as well as in the light. It is walking by faith and not by sight. It is relying on God with unquestioning confidence and resting in his law. Amen. That's holiness. Question is, I don't know about you, but I haven't attained to that level of holiness yet. But here is the encouraging piece. I can be holy because God has called me to be holy. Mm -hmm. So in spite of my sinful state and my idiosyncrasies that are bent on evil, there is still the call for holiness. Mm -hmm. Now, so as we move on, we want to talk about, we're talking about holiness. But what does holiness look like? What would I see that would tell me that I am a holy person? And I just want to run through a few things. One, holiness looks like a person who is pressing for the mark of Christian perfection. Philippians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16 says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Mm. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. Thus minded for what? Pressing forward to the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. What is that mark of high calling? It is the hope of glory in us, mm. which is victory over sin. So that is the first call, first attribute of the person who is striving to be holy. Mm. Now, Ellen White, my favorite 
author <laughs> adds to this. This is what she says in the book Acts of the Apostles. She says, he, talking about the person, the, the person, us, let me just back up and just give you the backdrop of that quotation before I add this to it. Here's what she says. She says, the work of transformation from unholiness to holiness is a continuous one. Is what? A continuous, continuous. one. Day by day, God labors for man's sanctification. He's laboring for your sanctification and for my sanctification. And man is to cooperate with him, putting forth persevering efforts in the cultivation of right habits. So it's a continuous work. So there's not a day that we can say we're taking a vacation, not in the work of being holy. So here is it now. He is talking about man is to add grace to grace. And as he thus work on the plan of addition, God works for him on the plan of multiplication. Amen. Amen. So while I'm struggling with just adding one plus one, God is multiplying my one plus one, and then it suddenly becomes one plus ten, until I look like my Savior. Mm -hmm. Gladly he grants them the blessing. He grants us the blessings <laughs> that we need in the struggle against evil mm -hmm. that besets us. Mm -hmm. So that's one. What is another quality of the holy person? The quality, another quality of the holy person is that he or she intercedes for others who are in trouble. Do we have a Bible example of that? When we turn to Genesis chapter 18, we saw Abraham interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah when God shared with him the mission they were on. He began to intercede for them. Lord, if you can find 50 people, will you spare the city? If you can find 45, if you can find 40, and he came all the way down to 10, asking, Lord, can you save them if you can? Not only we have that in uh, Abraham, but we have that also in Moses. In Exodus chapter 33, when uh, Israel rebelled against God by making a golden calf. What did Moses and God wanted to, to uh, destroy them? He told Moses that you can leave them here. I'll take you and I'll take you over into the promised land. Moses' response to God was, unless you're taking them, do not take me from this place. Do not, I'm not going without them. This is intercession for people who are in trouble. I don't know about you, but I happen to know a few who are in trouble, including myself, that we need some intercession. Yes. And this is the mark yes. of a holy person. Mm -hmm. Another mark of a holy person is that this person will stand alone in order to be faithful to truth. Mm -hmm. The holy person is not worried about what others are thinking about his choices. He or she is concerned about what God thinks about their choice. And they're willing to stand alone. 
I'm thinking about Joseph. I'm thinking about Daniel. I'm thinking about Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, who were willing to stand alone for truth. This is a sign of a holy person. What's another sign of a holy person? That person hates evil. Mm -hmm. I know that's not a popular thing to say in this day and age because there's no such thing as evil. But I want you to know that it is still a conception in God's book. Mm -hmm. And here's what he says about the holy person. Psalm 97 and verse 10. He that love the Lord hate evil. Mm -hmm. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. The, he that love the Lord does what? Hate hates evil. Him. Proverbs 8 and verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So, and finally, hate the evil and love the good. Mm. These are the qualities of the person who is holy. Mm. Just want to read something again from Ellen White. Here's what she says. The fear of the Lord will constrain us not only to abstain from outward sin, but inwardly to abominate it. It will not only bind our heart, our hands, but change our hearts. Mm -hmm. The fear of man may make us hide our sins, but the fear of the Lord will make us loathe and detest them. Mm -hmm. And that's what when we love the Lord, and we are striving for holiness, it will create in us a hate, a detest. We will detest evil. That's what will happen to us. Mm -hmm. Another quality mm -hmm. about evil is that we will, does the person who is holy, does the will of God from the heart. From the heart. Ephesians 6 and verse verses 6. Another quality is that that person lives by every word. Every word of God. Amen. Matthew 4 and verse 4. Holiness is living by Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is trusting God in darkness as well as in light. Amen. Walking by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. From the little book, Fundamental of Christian Education. The Bible fully received and studied as the word of God tells the human family how to reach the abodes of eternal happiness and secure the treasures of heaven. Amen. The word of God. Yes. So the question is, that's what the holy person, the qualities of a holy person. So how do we get this holy life? How do we operationalize this to make it Practical. I call this practical godliness. Mm -hmm. One, live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. This is hard. Because God's words are constantly in conflict with our carnal nature. But the idea is that when I surrender my carnal nature 
to the will of God. Then, and I ask for his power and strength to dwell in me through the person of the Holy Spirit. And I place my will on his side. Then I can live by his word. Mm -hmm. I can do it. Mm -hmm. You see, when I might be saying and praying like, Lord, I do know my nature does not want to do this, but I am willing to do it because this is what you're asking me to do. Would you give me the grace and the strength to do? Mm -hmm. And you would, the promise is, God will empty all of heaven so that I can be a what? Obedient to his word. Amen. The next thing is that to make this is that Jesus has to be our standard of righteousness. Not the pastor, not the sister, not the general conference president. No. Jesus is my standard of righteousness. And we just have to look to him and keep your eyes on Jesus. And then the last thing is that we have to wrestle with God for victory. Who did that? Jacob did. And we just have to say, I will not let you go unless you give me victory. Unless you declare me holy, I will not let you go. But here's where we are. Another year of life is now to be in the past. A new year is to open before us. The question is, what will be its record? What will we each inscribe upon the spotless pages of this new year? The manner in which we spend each passing day will decide this question. The encouragement is, let us enter upon the new year with our hearts cleansed from the defilement of selfishness and pride. Let us put away every sinful indulgence and seek to become faithful, diligent learners in the school of Christ. A new year opens its unsolid pages before us. What shall we write upon them? Wow. My last quote from Ellen White. She says that when she looked at the call for holiness, she said, when I view the narrow, the narrowness of the way, my soul cries out, who shall be able to stand when he appeareth? Shall I go through? My daily prayer is, Lord, make me good. Write thy holy law upon my heart and help me to look to Jesus till I reflect not me. You can be holy. I can be holy because God has called us to be holy. Not only has He called us, but He has provided all the necessary resources for us. So, should in case the Lord grant us 2024 by His grace, can we make it a year of holiness? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you find in us, sinful human beings, the opportunity to be like you. We can't understand it. 
but we are grateful that you put such great value upon us. Help us to put the value that you have placed upon us, on ourselves, and strive to be holy, so that when you shall come, we will hear the benediction, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joys of thy Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for hearing and answering. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.